Okay, I had a lot of fun stamping something out earlier today, previous lesson, and I thought I would do another scene while I had all the stamps out. Okay, so we're going with another piece of half page, uh, eight and a half by five and a half inch um, glossy cardstock. And let's see, let's start off with the Starbirth number 217 stamp. You can use, you know, pretty much any of the uh, sky figures. They're all pretty much interchangeable. They're, you know, they, they, they're different designs. But, um, you know, when we're talking about stars and with all the color that we end up laying down on here, um, you know, you can pretty much use any of them. Milky Way would be a great choice. Um, star Cluster. Um, uh, spiral Galaxy. There's, I don't know, if you look at, go onto our website if you're curious, um, and just look up sky figures under the, uh, if you look up stamps by category, you'll see all the different um, sky figures in there. Okay, now I thought I would try a different color scheme. There's a color scheme that I'm really fond of, and that's using really some really bright greens. And uh, I love that glow, that Kind of that lime green, almost neon green glow um, in scenes. All right, this is the uh, nebula with star. I'm going for some, you know, just trying to create some uh, kind of interesting deep space textures. Okay, I'd, I'd say figures, but on this one, I'm really going for the textures, and uh, we'll use a lot of it um, in this background here. Things don't have to be perfect. I mean, in most cases, you know, that's just goes for the entire line of stamps. I've made it where you can really overlap things and, uh, you know, with little to no masking um, is needed, nor does it, you know, really come in handy most of the time. You want to overlap things so that it comes out nice and seamless, okay? This is the Cloud Cumulus. I'm just going into the other designs by about half an inch to about three-quarter inch, probably. I mean, you can go up to an inch or something like that. Okay, but just getting some extra textures, it's looking pretty crazy right now. But anyways, um, as far as that blending aspect of things, I'm going to be laying down a ton of color over the top of this. So... Um, any type of irregularities or something like that is not really going to matter, but see how beautiful these things all blend together like that? You can decide which way's up and which way's down and whatnot. Sky figures are a lot of fun to use. And you can go for a ton of texture and kind of interesting um, looks, you know, with the uh, application of them. And there's all kinds of different variations. You don't have to use them the way that I'm using them. This is kind of a, an extreme um, way of uh, kind of using them and, I don't know, laying them out, you know, just you know, on a big, I don't know, kind of a mixed canvas or whatnot, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now I'm going to try something. I, I like the way these mementos kind of, as you lay them out, um, Normally you're used to seeing mementos in uh, pad form, but I, I'm i going to be using um, just the re-inkers. Uh, I, I want to go for some really thick applications of ink, and uh, these mementos look really good because they kind of separate after you've applied them to the paper. I don't know how it would look. It, that's on glossy cardstock, at least. Okay, so that was... Um, what color was that? That was Paris Dusk. I don't even know what color that is. Um, I don't have the pad form of that. And then I just used the new sprout, that green one. And this is one of the brightest colors that I know in terms of um, just inks on the market. And that is light green by Marvy. It's a real lime, real hot green. Actually, I have the pad right here. That's pretty true to the uh, the spirit of the color. It's it's a super bright green. Okay. Now, let's just go for some general kind of swatches of this, okay? 
This is the new sprout. I don't even know if I've used this before, but um, let's just get some of this in here. Okay. Mento isn't going to be nearly as bright as... I love them, okay? And this is not a, a knock on them, but um, it's not going to be nearly as bright as the Marvy ones, in which in this case, I want that quality out of them. But I do want some really bright colors in here, though, too. Uh, which will be provided by those Marvy um, inks. Okay, so I'm just kind of laying this around here and there. And uh, if you've watched um, the previous video of mine, uh, Star Dreamer it was called, um, you saw me splatter paint this, and I'm going to be doing that as well on this one. Okay, this is the... Uh, Paris Dusk. Let's see what color that is. All right, that's it's a really dark brown, uh, blue. And watch this when I lay it down. I, or I hope you can see it. See that little speckled area that's kind of appearing in there? It really kind of, uh, I don't know why it does that, but it's kind of cool. It just kind of, I don't know, it gets real texturized for some reason upon application. Like that. I know this looks really sloppy, and it is. I wouldn't say that I want it to be sloppy, okay, but I don't mind if it is, though, at this point in time. Okay, let's get some of that laid down. The, the, uh, Memento inks are typically really quite thick in viscosity, okay? So I'm just kind of surprised. It's really setting up really quickly for me here. Quicker than I thought. Okay. So here we go like that. All right, let's go on with the Marvy green here. The light green. And this is a really powerful green. Okay. I'm not applying this equally everywhere, you know, so I'm just kind of slopping it on, uh, for lack of a better word, but that's essentially what I'm doing here. Looks like I need a little bit more of that one. Or do I? Eh. Let's go for a little bit more. I'm not, this isn't <laughs> kind of a, a manner in which I typically work in, you know, with such, I don't know, kind of a haphazard kind of a application of tone. Usually I have areas that I'm kind of retaining um, certain, I don't know, saturations of and certain lightnesses of. I'm controlling light through the use of shadow and making some areas lighter, some areas darker. Some areas look lighter by using some darks next to it. So this is really kind of a, you know, quite, quite different um, in this type of scene, you know, where we're just going to, going for the uh, kind of this nighttime sky solar thing. Now, the last scene I really liked, but um, I thought, eh, it was a little bit conservative in terms of re the retention of some of the, uh, the light. I wanted to get a little bit darker, I thought, you know, on that one at least. Uh, as far as the initial concept went, you know, when I got into it, I thought, eh, I'm going to hold back a little bit and kind of leave it a little bit lighter in some areas, so that way I do have kind of this depiction of light um, within the scene, so I've left some of my clouds pretty light. But this one, you know, I've ta already take it, took them to the, uh, the value of that light green by coloring them that. Okay, so this one right here, let's go a little bit darker overall. And, and the reason for it is I just want, I want these um, little um, 
star, star, I don't know, te star textures, I guess, um, created with the use of uh, the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which we'll be using for a really, really super fun effect. Okay, now I forgot to mention, by the way, this is uh, the number 10 blue that I'm using. It's a really bright blue from Marvy. Very, very bright blue. Uh, not light, you know, in terms of uh, value, but bright in terms of intensity, okay? Center right in there, see how kind of intense this is. It's everything's kind of looking a little bit deeper. Kind of the more color you add to something. Start to adding it a little bit selectively. See right in here I've left some of these clans a little bit lighter by making the area kind of in between this and this one a little bit darker. So I am doing a little bit more of a selective kind of application of color at this point in time, but there's no point. It's just like, well, which, what do you keep light and which, what do you keep dark? Well, and something like this, maybe you want to keep some of these stars a little bit lighter, you know, but it's, it's really, doesn't really matter too much, just as long as you kind of oscillate those colors, uh, color applications, okay? So you do have a little bit of light and dark um, playing off of each other within a given space or within objects, okay? In this case, it's the clouds right here. Um, right, so see how that's kind of looking? It's, it's kind of got a nice glow to it. All right, we're getting pretty dark here, and it's time to compensate uh, on the camera here a little. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that... When I start, I was saying, when I start off with a completely white piece of paper, there's a lot of light reflecting back at the camera, so I need to remember to adjust the uh, exposure as my scene gets darker, or scenes, if they do get darker, I need to change the exposure of the camera. Anyways, but look at that. Depth and saturation, doesn't that look like a kind of deeper space than a two, you know, two-dimensional object. It looks a little bit more, I don't know, the, just the illusion of space. And I'm not talking about outer space, I'm talking about distance. Um, seems to, you know, take place uh, within these layers of ink here that you can apply. Okay. All right, that was blue, and it's not even that dark of a blue, is it? But certainly very, very bright. Okay, let's try this one right here. This is a navy blue with memento. There's things like Danube blue. You can use something like that, too. You know, you can see if it, you know, is dark enough to kind of make a difference. If it is, then use more of it. But, I don't know, could you see, you know, why, in this case, I really wasn't worried about kind of that sloppy application of that Paris dusk or something like that on here. It doesn't really matter, you know, we're building up so much color on here. All right, number three, blue from Marvy. Marvy's a little bit of a thinner ink in terms of viscosity, so, you know, when you start getting a lot of buildup on here, Sometimes, if it's a thinner ink, you can kind of apply more of it onto the piece and have it show. If you're using kind of a thicker ink, sometimes you're dabbing down like this, and it just kind of reabsorbs right back and put in the sponge, you know, without it, you know, kind of transferring um, to the page as much as you'd like. But it's kind of good in a way because it. That being said, it, it really allows you to kind of spread and blend your colors very nicely. On the other hand, kind of it's hard to apply them, you know, uh, without heat setting your page or something like that, which you can do. You can just hit it with a heat gun and dry it off a little bit. What happens is the pulp of the paper gets, starts getting pretty wet. So, you know, when you're trying to stain, which dye-based inks do, that's how they color something. Uh, 
just nothing is transferring to the surface, you know, because the pulp is so super saturated. Okay. That is that. Um, oh, here we go. This is the pet I'm looking for right here. Prussian blue is a beautiful, really dark blue. See that darkness right there? So much fun to use. I'll be thinking about these stylus tools. This is the stylus tool right here. Every time I use these for now on, because I've just received our well, not just, uh, we've received our final order from ClearSnap, the company. They're going out of business. Depending on when you're watching this, you don't need to, if you feel inclined to ever get these, you know, you better get them. Don't wait too long, okay? Yeah, we'll have these in stock for a while, because I ordered a ton of them, but um, I don't know. I say that, but some people are ordering like 10 packs of, you know, tips and things like that, so it's kind of not lasting me. It might not last as long as I thought it would. Which is not a sales pitch. Um, there's a lot of places that carry it, and I would recommend uh, kind of looking around if you think you might be interested in them. Okay, so this is the uh, Cloud Cumulus again, and just like in the previous video, um, I've lost a lot of the form, naturally, where um, the, uh, the ink applications got very, very dark, okay? Even though I did stamp it out in a very dark color, uh, the color applications now are really dark quite, you know, as well, so I'm going to wipe off the edge of this. Just so it kind of blends in a little bit more. Now, see, the lighting is coming from within the scene, right? So I'm going to have the clouds always facing in whenever I go for an impression of it, okay? Something like that. So if it's going to be up here, the lighting is underneath, right? So you have it bottom lit. If the lighting is coming from above and we're down here, it's top lit, so see? So I just turn that around that way. If it's side, then it's going like that because the lighting is always coming from this direction, whatever you point it, okay? So going to put a little bit more depth, and see I just kind of wipe off this edge there when I'm stamping this cloud in a really dark color. It's kind of a good idea to kind of wipe it off uh, on the perimeter, just so it kind of blends in with that surrounding. Look at that. Doesn't that give it a little bit of extra dimension or depth? Visual depth. Okay, how's that? Yeah, I was debating. I thought, nah, I could see that cloud there pretty good, but let's throw one over here anyway. It'll kind of balance things off a little bit more. So there we have a lot more depth now. Doesn't that look like a, kind of the illusion of kind of deeper space as you go back in there? Look at that glow from that number 11. Ah, uh, uh, Marvy, Marvy matchable reinker. I do love that kind of that overall color scheme right there. It's one of my favorites. I love the always loved uh, kind of you watch these uh, kind of like pirate movies or something like that. It seems like they always had like green emeralds, you know. 
Okay, using some black here to just kind of add around the perimeter and it kind of blends in those black cloud shapes a little bit more. Let the fun begin. Everything's really fun, but this is really fun. Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Okay, it's this little jar. Oh, I don't know how many ounces it is. It's a, something, one fluid ounce, okay? Now oh, this is made in Colorado. All right, um, it's an opaque watercolor really popular with calligraphers because they can use their dip pens with it and get a really quite opaque um, letter forms you know uh, on dark paper so it's really popular in the calligrapher community I have no idea what this stuff is made out of but it is very very opaque and thus the bleed proof okay so you want to kind of get it to a, a certain consistency um, you don't want it too watery, otherwise it'll kind of drip all over your... And what I'm doing is, I'm, as I ink this up, I'm kind of wiping some of it off, otherwise I'll get some big blobs sometimes. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's okay. You know, because it goes for a little bit of variation. But okay, now see, I'm going to, need to take my thumb and run it back this way, so it splatters out that way. Sometimes I do this at, <laughs> at uh, like a convention. I say, okay, I'm going to splatter it, and people like 10 feet away from me back up. It's not going to splatter that far. It's probably given me a range of, you know, like from here to here. It just depends how how close you are to the, uh, you know, the piece. You don't want to get too close, but you just have to get a feel for it. Okay, that was a little bit too dry. I'm getting really tiny little dots, which I want, but I want some bigger ones too. So let's see if I can get some bigger ones. Isn't that, isn't that a great texture? Okay, I think that's about enough. See? It's kind of got a little bit of a random pattern of, um, you know, dense and uh, thin, not real thin. I kind of splattered it in quite a bit of areas, but there's there's some larger um, drops and, uh, and smaller ones. Okay, I need to compensate again here um, as far as my exposure of this goes. The scene looks a little bit darker than what it's looking like right now. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's about that's about right. Look at that. It doesn't look like a, you know, I don't know, kind of a, <laughs> a quick and easy, um, like a Hubble, you know, you know, Hubble telescope looking, you know, I don't know, thing or something that you'd see in, a, you know, Smithsonian Magazine or I don't know, is that magazine still out there even? Um, of, uh, I don't know, like a Hubble image or something like that, like I was saying. Okay, now this is just a white gel pen, and see, now I, I want to add some variation in here, okay? Everything is just so, uh, eh, you know, uh, uniform in texture. Even though I said there's some variation, you know, there's some thicker ones in there, but not real big dots, okay? So I want some decent sized ones in here, and after that last... A piece that I did, I thought, eh, I could have taken it a little bit um, further. Yeah, just in terms of the uh, uh, the variation of uh, stars and textural forms and whatnot, pushing it a little bit. Okay, I, I don't know. I stuck with kind of some smaller dots. 
Let's go with some larger ones here. Kind of cluster some of your dots together, maybe. Kind of varies it a little bit. Okay, I think that some decent sized um, stars there, you know, what, it, what those would represent in there. Okay, let's go for some um, multiple colored ones. Okay, now we have a green colored scheme. You can, you know, break out your, uh, oh, you're just different colored pens. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, you don't have to stick with the color scheme, but that's generally where I start off. Okay, that was a Uniball Signo pins. These ones right here are Uniball as well. This one's a, like a pastel blue. It's not real apparent, you know, when I, when I do this, because it's a dark, you know, even though it's pastel and it's fairly light as far as a blue color scheme is, if I put it over, you know, a color that's the same value, it doesn't really show up very well. Now see if I start moving it into, uh, you know, some darker areas, it stands out a little bit lighter, but in here it just goes, it just creates kind of a uh, an additional texture and hue change within a given space. It's almost, it's very subtle though, because it kind of blends into the background. You know, you put green over, or blue over green, and you know, there's not much of a a change. That's what I like, though. I, I do like that um, aspect of it. I, I, I believe in, <laughs> or I don't, it's not that. I believe in, I, I, I enjoy subtlety, okay? And this is the type of thing that really kind of, it gives the recipient of your piece, or just someone that's viewing your piece, it rewards them for further inspection, you know, really taking, observing and um, uh, the piece, you know. And that's what you kind of want. You want people to kind of enjoy things kind of on a, um, kind of a first viewing aspect, okay but then you want them to be able to really kind of take a look at it and inspect it, you know, further and to notice all kinds of little things that you've thrown in, you know, just for them. Just for them could be the recipient of the card or just someone viewing the piece. And, you know, and what is that, you know, you know, when they start noticing, now this is a shuttle art green here, it's not quite as opaque as the Marvy, I mean, a uh, Uniball Signo one, so I don't know if this is going to show up or not very well, but I do love the color on white pieces of paper. These, these pens were designed or conceived for the, uh, adult coloring book market, so, you know, it's not designed to be used on, you know, glossy cardstock, but um, it does pretty well. And you see, I can see those pieces, you know, those little stars down there. All 
All right, so let's play around with something too. Um, that was the, uh, the green. Ow. Oh, I can go into some metallics too. But I was thinking about kind of doing a color change. Okay, how about something like a. Let me see if this pen of mine's working. It's kind of a fluorescent pink. You might think, what? Well, pink, you know, that's crazy. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. In the, you know, galaxies and distant planets and things like that. Um, you know, different um, planets burn, you know. They have a different spectrum, different uh, chemistry, you know, makeup to their uh, planet. So it's kind of different gases and whatnot. And I don't know, this pink and green make a pretty good combination, you know, it's like those, uh, well, I don't know if it's pink, it's more purple, but um, that lime green kind of Halloween, you know, color scheme along with the, you know, purple and orange and whatnot. But see these, it's just going for a slight tonal change. You see those little pink ones in here? It's not super, you know, obvious, but it just it tweaks the um, the color scheme you know, that you've kind of established in there. So it's another one of those little things that um, you know maybe someone notices um, in your piece. All right, and. Uh, let me see, I know I have a silver gel pen around here somewhere. Okay, here's a gold one. I haven't used the gold in a while. Let's see if it even, it's even working. Oh, here's the silver one. These are both Uniball Signos, okay. Alright, this one I haven't used in a long time. Looks like it might have separated. I have really great luck with most of my pens. And I can usually get them going just by giving them a couple little wax, but now oh, let me see. I do have another gold pen too, but here's a silver. I'm just going for those little extra touches. This is something that's like impossible to show up on a, you know, like a scan, but um, all right, you can see some of these get a little bit here. Let me. Just do a little cluster of them right here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I guess I put like a bunch of them right here, but see how that reflects? It's nothing and then something. Oh, there's some right there too. You can see it kind of, those metallics, how they stand out. But they could be very subtle too. Look at that. Invisible, right? But then you kind of catch the light and it. You know, it's, it's like one of those little things uh, that kind of reveals itself. Um, again, it's in a subtle way. Okay, let's see here. All right, it's time for some uh, foreground in here. This scene in general, does not, it looks fairly dark, doesn't it? But let's go in here and um, add some additional forms, okay? So, um, anyways, what I mentioned in my previous video is I was referencing it just in memory, kind of this thing, you know, where you see these um, photo collages or whatever, or photographs. In, in this case, it's more of a photo collage because you see like these deep space images like the Hubble and the Nebula and stuff like that. But um, it's from this vantage point of us, you know, being somewhere and looking up through uh, the trees and the branches and things like that. If I, I could put pine trees in here too and that would look kind of cool. But that that's the vantage point that we're looking at um, or that we're thinking of here. So I'm going to go with a very, very thick ink and that's a versifying black, okay? One of the things you could do, what you might think about doing too is um, stamping out these things in here and, and embossing them like in a, you know, like a, um, like a detailed black embossing powder, so you can have actually these kind of three-dimensional forms right around on here, and I, I think that would be really interesting to do. Okay. 
But right now we'll just use the VersaFine Black and uh, see if we can get some really good dimension out of it just with dark ink. But now look at that. See how that really stands out against that background right there. Okay, so kind of lay, lie on our back and look at the look at the stars. I, I remembered after I stamped uh, my scene earlier today. I do have a quote stamp on the scenic sentiments. That's lie lie on your back and look at the stars. And I really like that quote. So that's always a great thing to do. I really like kind of looking up at the night sky and especially if you're you're in an area you know where you can see a lot of stars and you don't have a lot of uh you know kind of city light obstruction we used to go out to uh, the deserts uh, the high deserts of California whenever the uh meteor shower, annual meteor shower came by through and uh, you know you can really see them really well out there but I, I just enjoy looking at the night sky too you know even without the uh, you know that occasion um, I'm trying to remember the name of those ones I think it might have been the Leonids or something So anyways, that was the oak branch. I have one, two, three, four, five impressions. I didn't use the whole thing because I didn't want to stamp out the whole thing right in there and cover up everything. But see where you stamped it around in here, even though it does cover up, doesn't it really enhance whatever's around in there, whatever's next to it, okay? I mean, it does show through, but look how deep and... Uh, you know, that, that space that really looks deep in there, you know. In terms of, uh, I don't know, I guess space itself, you know, outer space. But I'm talking about space in terms of distance. Now, putting something really close to us, it really pushes back that um, area in there for a, you know, kind of a visually, I don't know, I keep saying a deep space. That's what, it, that's what it looks like to me. All right, now this is the spooky branch. I'm just adding this in here for some extra texture, you know, just a, kind of a textural change. I'm trying to decide where I want it to go. Let's add one right over here, maybe. I used a, a couple different images um, earlier, and I thought, eh, that, that branch would have been really fantastic in there. Look at that. I like this. I've designed a lot of my images so where it can really be full and kind of full yet sparse. I don't know. It just depends on how you use it, you know. And if it's if you make something where it can kind of be used in a few different ways, you know, you really saved yourself a lot of time in terms of the designing process. But you know, it's. Everyone's purchasing, you know, your money goes a lot further the more universally applicable some image can be. And that's really important to me. I want value out of everything that I buy. And uh, it's no different from everything that we design and sell. Okay. So. Okay, we're coming in like that. We need another one around in here somewhere. Or would that be too monotonous? Well, let's see. Maybe one more. I'm kind of using the tip of this right here. See what that did? You know, the perimeter thing. It, it puts us in a, you know, really a definitive position. You know, we're definitely kind of lying on the ground or something like that and looking up at the sky. Or, you know, maybe you're in your tent or something like that and looking upward. What I'm doing by flipping this around to, I'm trying to decide on which way's up and which way's down. 
Or maybe not that. I'm I'm kind of leaning towards this one, but I'm not sure. And like I said in my previous video, and like I say in other videos, if you're kind of twirling it around trying to figure out a place and nothing really stands out to you more than another, it probably is because it means it doesn't matter to you. So it can go any which way. All right, now I like these leaves in there. I, I think uh, a little bit more texture. Um, there is a little bit of, well, maybe monotony or something like that in here. So kind of another little textural form in here just to kind of finish it off, okay? I mean, out in nature, you see, you know, different types of plants right next to each other. See, there's that leaf one. Isn't that VersaFine really fantastic, though? Uh, Dye-based inks work, and I and I use those for years. Okay, a lot of times I or I sometimes I'd use a Memories Black because it was just so dark. But um, yeah, it, you know, I'd have to say that uh, I do think that uh, this Versafine Black, if there is a darker one, black than that, I I don't know. I'm not saying there isn't. I just you know. I haven't seen it, and I have not tested all kinds of different pads out there. I tend to, you know, use the ones that I have, you know, until, I don't know, until I really feel like I need some more, or whenever I go to the next uh, store, then I can't help it, and uh, all of you know what I'm talking about if you're watching this video. I don't have a huge number of pads, but I haven't traveled around a lot uh, in quite a while, so. Um, otherwise, I'd have everything, you know. I can't help it. I'm really bad at paper stores, too. Okay, so, here we go. I put us in a much denser area now by, you know, putting that extra... Um, a few impressions in there of those leaves, but I think they look pretty nice. I'm trying to think of what way is up and which way is down. I think this way looks bottom and top to me. Maybe it's because of those leaves, you know, hanging that way. I don't know. Okay, now that is going to come into play, you know, in terms of up and down, because I, I think I am going to use... Um, some more images. I'm thinking about those birds or something like that in here, too. Let me pause this video, and I need to decide what I'm going to do as far as um, a couple images in here. Okay, I didn't have to uh, take too long here. I had a couple images on my desk from a scene that I did not too long ago, and that's these two eagles one here. One of them is eagle soaring which is this one, and this one's just eagle. And they're two silhouettes, and they work really great against a really dark background, but um, I have this, uh, a card I need to make pretty soon. And I think this one will be it right here, because I have these two eagles flying together in the night sky and having a great time. There's one, like so, and eagle and eagle soaring, like that. It's always kind of fun when you see um, birds um, kind of in that, in a thermal, you know, kind of funneling up into the uh, sky. Not night sky, but uh, it'd be in the day, but this is kind of that same spirit of kind of just effortless flying, you know, being caught in that thermal and going up to the heavens and whatnot. Birds love doing that. Okay, so, um, let's see here. There's a lot of texture in here, and that's what I really love about this 
type of piece right here and uh, the color application process is really easy to do too. All right, I need to compensate again for this um, exposure. That looks pretty good though, really light like that, but it's a little bit darker than that if my back of my screen's any uh, indication. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, hmm. Still a little bit dark in that, touch darker maybe, but anyways, that's pretty close. Okay, so what you have is now, do you see why I've laid down all these other images in here? You could do this scene where you just do the swatched background, okay? Kind of amorphic things, and I love that look, too. I do these um, kind of aurora borealis things where it's just kind of streaks of color and um, kind of these pillars of light or curtain of light or something like that. And then I'll, you know, put some uh, texture over it. You know, usually... I don't, know, I don't know if I've splatter painted mine before, but um, I've used these white gel pen marks in there. But in this case, you know, where we're going for that kind of deeper space image, kind of a dreamier type of um, scenario as far as um, seeing those types of forms back there. You can see they're in there, but they're really buried. You can see the cloud a little bit more, but you can see these stars back in here. But they, they kind of lend themselves, you know, to... Um, this kind of textural form. It's all about texture in this piece right here, but it's about a little bit of an oscillation of light and dark in here as well. So having those kind of forms back there, you know, with the, the nebula and this right here, it just kind of gives you a little bit of a head start. And even though we've run a lot of colors in there, those images, if you stamp them out dark, can hold up to all of those inks that we've laid down on top of there. It might have been, what, five or six colors maybe or something like that but not equally applied but it doesn't have to be really um, strategically applied either you know there's just kind of some glowing areas in there meaning we've just kind of colored around here and there we've made some areas darker and lighter and it doesn't really matter what you do just as long as there's this kind of oscillation of those forms in there meaning that when you just get into your darker tones just don't color all of the light areas out and it doesn't really matter where you do that then when you splatter paint over the whole thing, it just kind of becomes this textural kind of foundation by which to stamp out these types of trees or whatever you have. This would look great for um, kind of like a scene that I did a little, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago where I just had these pine trees kind of leaning up there. So you get these kind of taller trees kind of going back in perspective in there. And that would be kind of cool too. But anyways, um, going back to my comment on texture, you know, we have all this texture running around in here. We have the texture of the... Uh, the bleed proof white especially i'd love adding that type of thing in there and then the texture of the different forms in there and just kind of you know just the um, thick um, application of the color scheme in here and just retaining some of those lights in there and it, i think it ends up being a really fun type of scene to do and uh, i think quite dramatic and uh, i don't know it's one of those things where we don't really have to be too careful about um, our application of media. I mean, that you know, that memento ink that I laid down there, and especially that Paris Dux one, it, that looked uh, pretty terrible. But I knew that it's not really going to matter because adding down all these different tones over the top of it, you know, something like, that big slathering of that Paris dusk out there wasn't going to matter anyways because it ends up getting darker around the perimeter anyway or in here and then we splatter paint over the top of it you know it just kind of all adds up to kind of an overall um I don't know kind of representation of deep space where you don't really pay attention to um I don't know some bad streak of some color that we'd laid down, you know, I don't know, 20 steps ago or something like that. It's all about kind of the end result and just kind of staying with it and just, you know, following the process in terms of at least this kind of application of media. And it all tends to come together in the end. Now this something like this is going to look really fantastic. Um, when I spray seal this, okay, because all those inks that we've laid down on here are transparent inks because they're um, they're dye-based inks. 
So this will become much more saturated and that look within this space will look even deeper um, than it looks right now. Okay, so anyways, um, give it a try. Try with different media too. You know, you can go with all kinds of uh, things. Oh, I, I remember the ink that I was trying to think of. Uh, I, I don't know when it was uh, yesterday or something like that. Where were oxides? You know, when those oxides kind of look interesting. You know, in here. I don't know. Mix and match. You know, maybe put some oxides over the top of. Uh, you know, some of your dye-based ones. I don't think you can put dye-based over oxides, but I believe oxides can get applied over the top of dye, though. Uh, but who knows? Try some alcohol ink applications of it. You know, you have those spritzer bottles full of um, alcohol inks, too, I believe. You can try things like that. Try kind of going with all kinds of things, and you can come up with some kind of more, kind of an abstraction, maybe, in terms of the, uh, you know, kind of the foundation result. And then you can just stamp over it with... Um, you know, some nice and dark impressions to give this kind of this perspective of, you know, us looking up at this night sky or something of that sort. And that's really fun to do. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, uh, maybe like, uh, share, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. All right, thanks for tuning into the channel. All right, disregard everything I just said. <laughs> Well, not not everything. I forgot to do a, a complete step. I was looking at um, the scene that I did earlier, and I thought, "Oh, I forgot my uh, I forgot my pigment ink here." That's why I've made um, some of these dots in here so large. Okay, you know those larger, you know the larger gel pen ones. Okay, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to go for textural changes. Okay. Or I like to create textural variation. And let me look at this right here. Okay, so you see these larger little white dots in here, okay? Those are the ones that I'm going to want to kind of enhance, okay? And I'm just going to be using some just standard white pigment ink here. This one here happens to be the Hero Arts Unicorn one. And I'll just get it right on my tip here. And... Um, as I always explain in my videos, because everyone does this, including me, um, I we use too much ink on here, so I've dabbed it into the, my pad right here, and the pad's always like really juicy. See, that's a big blob, uh, big blob of white paint on there. Okay, even with a very light tap, you know, I get a little bit of something. But if I tap, you know, deeper. That's a big blob of paint right there, okay? What you want is you want a consistency where you, when you tap it down, there's barely anything there. And through repeated tappings, you get that little bit of translucent glow, okay? What happens is people go like this, though. They go like, oh my god, there's nothing there. So they go like that, and then there's a big blob there again, okay? So you, it's more of this kind of just repetition of tapping like that. And it becomes, you know, it gets in focus, kind of, you know? A little bit clearer, right? And that's about it. So you just want kind of a real, kind of a translucent application of that ink, okay? So you just have to get the, you take your time to get the right consistency. You're not going to have to do that for every tap that you do. You only have to do that once or twice. I don't know, maybe I took off too much, I don't know. But uh, let's take a look here and see what some of these little um, dots can become, okay? See this one? I put it over that. See that little kind of glowing little sphere? So it's like little starlight in there. Um, it kind of illuminates that particular dot more. It doesn't have to be the big ones, but I don't know. Just in theory, maybe, you know, the bigger, the closer the star, maybe the brighter the light. I don't know. Eh, you know, but the younger stars burn really bright though too so it's not always just the big ones you know it's like the aren't the Pleiades uh, kind of a younger stars and they're really quite bright in the night sky so you can kind of do that I mean be careful around the uh, um, the uh, versifying <laughs> impressions because they're probably still a little bit wet right now but see those little 
you know, little glowing little spheres. I should have done this before I stamped these things out. Then I wouldn't even have to worry about kind of working around them. But I wouldn't want to get like some star in between all those branches right here because that black is still wet. But there's plenty of stars to deal with in here, so. Kind of, you know, just go here and there. Like I said, you don't have to always just get the bigger dots, okay? Um, I can't now, but you can do enough to be effective. Actually, that VersaFine looks like it's is drying pretty good, uh, actually. I didn't think it'd be dry by now. I don't think it's completely dry everywhere, so I wouldn't trust it to, uh, you know, tap into it. And in fact, I could see some... I don't know if you can see it right there, but... See that kind of... You can see some areas of those impressions. They're still a little bit damp, you know, where there's... It's a little puddled, okay? So, you know, just be careful. But anyways, isn't that a, kind of a nice textural... Um, change that's happening in some of these, like one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, those stars are really standing out now, aren't they? So, I don't know, it's just that kind of little additional special touch around uh, a few of these. Just for some variation. Maybe, and like I said, maybe those ones are younger stars. Maybe they're closer to us or something like that. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just for the fact that we have this kind of textural variation happening on some of these dots so that they're not just all the same. Some are closer to this, some are further away, farther away. What is there? Red giants and white dwarfs and uh, uh, all kinds of things. Now, one of the things that I noticed here, this is just a little detail, is um, some of these stars in here were made with a shuttle art pen, okay? Those things are a little bit thinner, and when I tap over them, sometimes it removes the uh, dot, okay? The uh, the uniball signals kind of retain their, um, they maintain their, uh, I don't know, whatever application status, you know, upon uh, tapping with the pigment ink, but here we go. So anyways, a little bit of change in there. Um, in terms of that variation, look at those stars, you know, twinkling out there, glowing, not twinkling, but glowing. And it's really fun to do. So, all right, now I'm done. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching again, and hope you enjoyed the scene.